Hey friends, this week I bring you the new chapter of the manga, Baki Rahan. This time, we'll be diving into chapter 2 of this new series that revolves around Baki's older brother. The cover of this chapter features Jack Hanma standing with his arms crossed, sporting a calm and serene expression. There's also text that says something like, A pure man born of faith and born of violence, that's Jack Hanma. The chapter starts by showing us the exterior of a church. This church didn't seem to be located in Tokyo. It seems we were looking at a memory from the past. And the setting for this scene is in Canada, Jack Hanma's birthplace. It's quite human, says a person entering the church. The one who said that was a priest, who seemed to have served at that temple for many years. This is a story that this man will share with us next, and it happened 11 years ago. Traveling back in time, we can see the same man from the beginning, but a bit younger. He was talking to himself as he climbed the steps, leading into the church, where he had served for most of his life. The old man recalls that during that time, he met a young boy who was truly amazing. The boy never ceased to amaze him with each passing day. The priest mentions that once, on his way to the church, he encountered a peculiar situation. When he opened the door, he noticed that someone had already entered the church. He found it strange, since it was very early in the morning, and he was always the first to arrive. Upon seeing who it was, he was surprised to find a boy inside. The kid seemed to have been there for several hours. The priest deduced this by noticing the boy was drenched in sweat. It was as if he had been training there since the early hours. And just to clarify, this young boy was Jack Hanma when he was still a child. He bears a slight resemblance to 13-year-old Baki, which is expected since they are brothers and both carry the ogre's blood in their veins. The man asked the boy to explain why he was inside. Jack, still out of breath, could only manage to say that he was standing guard. The priest understood when he realized that Jack was staring at a statue behind him. It seemed Jack was watching over the figure of the crucified Christ inside the church. This figure was often visited by many believers who came to pray for miracles in their lives. The priest laughed with joy, his heart swelled with happiness to see someone so young having such a deep faith as to stay and guard an image of Jesus. The priest says that statue is a masterpiece crafted by human hands, yet has been blessed by the Heavenly Father. Little Jack didn't say a word, he just stood there listening to the old man's words. The priest told him to look intently at the face of that figure. Even though its eyes aren't open, it's always watching over everyone. That means, just as Jack was guarding that statue, a greater force was also guarding him. On the next page, we can see that the priest and Jack had decided to sit on the church's pews. The priest asks Jack about the reason for his visit to the church. Was he asking God for something? If that was the case, he wanted to know what the young boy so ardently wished for. Jack looks seriously at the man and tells him that the only thing he had asked God was to make him strong the strongest of all. The priest is surprised to hear this and asks the boy, How strong do you want to be? Jack says he wants to be very strong, strong enough to defeat the strongest creature on earth. These words leave the priest in disbelief, unable to comprehend what was going through the mind of this child to say such things. The man laughs and says he's surprised to hear that answer. After all, kids usually dream of becoming soccer players, doctors, or even presidents. This boy was definitely an exception. He didn't have the mindset of an ordinary child. Back in the present, we see the same priest, but now noticeably older. The man says that dreams, no matter how absurd they might seem, are a privilege for some. A dream of becoming a president might be laughable to some, but Jack's dream was very different from any other kids. Unlike most children, Jack was actively doing something to achieve his dream. He wasn't just waiting for his wish to magically come true. He was earnestly working towards realizing it as soon as possible. The priest takes a sip of coffee and continues his story. He says Jack trained every day of his life. He trained so hard that he would create large puddles of sweat. He would stay in the same spot for hours doing standard push-ups, knuckle push-ups, and even overhead push-ups. Such rigorous training was something his small body was not prepared for, which is why, on several occasions, his nose and eyes bled. His body was not prepared for long training routines, and the only time he stopped and rested was when he simply couldn't take it anymore, and his body collapsed. Even professional athletes collapse after pushing their bodies beyond their limits. However, athletes know when to stop. They don't train until they faint. They understand that the point of training is to push your body up to the limit where you know it's enough. This means they're aware of when to pause and rest. This was something Jack didn't do. To him, resting was wasting time. With this information, we now know that Jack had been following the same routine since he was a child, which is why he never managed to develop a functional physique. He was so focused on training that he neglected aspects like proper nutrition, healthy sleep, and most importantly, allowing his body to rest and adapt to the intense workouts he was doing. On the next page, we see that Jack had gone to visit Mitsunari. 
The old man tells Jack that he recently met with that priest, and it was he who had shared all this. Apparently the priest held him in high regard. Jack acknowledges this, saying that man had always encouraged him and was always concerned about his well-being. Mitsuneri conveys the priest's greetings to Jack. Switching topics, the elder tells Jack the reason he had summoned him. The old man says he wants to introduce him to a man who, like him, possesses weapons in his body. It could be said that this man has five dangerous weapons in his hands and will surely give Jack a lot of trouble if he accepts the challenge. Jack tells him to get to the point. Mitsuneri reveals that Jack's next opponent will be Kasho Shinagi. This man is known for cutting the nerves of his opponents using only his fingers. The chapter concludes with this intriguing proposition from Mitsuneri. Well, I wasn't really expecting a chapter focused on Jack's childhood. But it's always nice when Itagaki delves deeper into the characters and provides more backstory. This chapter revealed that Jack has always had a vengeful mindset since his youth. What I would like to know is how his mother managed to keep in touch with him while she was in prison. It's possible Jack was placed in an orphanage but ended up escaping. The story was brief, and we don't have much insight into how Jack survived all those years without his mother's presence. Recall in the Maximum Tournament, his mother showed up when Jack was being rushed to the hospital. This implies that by then, she had been released from prison. Perhaps Diane was sentenced to five or at most ten years when she was pregnant. Most likely, upon her release, she told Jack the whole truth, prompting him to seek revenge on her behalf. I hope the next few chapters we learn about the interactions between Jack and his mother. I'm curious about how Diane felt seeing her son as the spitting image of the man she despised the most. On the other hand, the end of the episode revealed that Kosho will be Jack Hamma's next opponent. But on second thought, we could say that he will be the first victim of the biting cyborg. It looks like Jack will make his way through the underground arena fighters and end up facing Baki and Yujiro. What surprises me is that Kosho is his initial opponent. If we remember correctly, he wasn't around when Jack made his famous challenge after defeating Nomi. This must have been Mitsunari's idea, so he likely has a good reason for setting up this match. Perhaps Kosho approached him a few days earlier, asking for a fight against Jack. However, the real reasons remain uncertain. Whatever the motive for this fight, it's highly likely we'll witness these two fighters clash in the upcoming manga chapters. Let me know your thoughts in the comment box below. I would like to know your opinion on this imminent confrontation. Do you think Kosho was the right choice as Jack Hamma's first opponent in this new arc, or should have been another character? Personally, I like the idea of bringing back characters that have been sidelined for a while. I don't remember the last time we saw Kasho in action, but it's exciting to know he'll be back in action. On the other hand, I feel a little sorry for him as things could end badly if Jack takes a single bite out of him. This chapter shed light on Jack's deep faith, revealing his belief in God since childhood. This did not surprise me since, during his fight with Pickle, Jack asked God to grant him victory. It should be noted that he is perhaps the only devout character in the series. Considering that he grew up without a father and with his mother in prison, it is understandable that he would seek solace in a divine figure. I hope future chapters delve deeper into these facets of Jack's life. White Baki doesn't typically focus on character backgrounds, more chapters like this would be intriguing. Until now the most compelling backstory was Baki's journey to defeat Yujiro. However, after their duel, fans were left speculating about the next steps. What would be the plot of the story from now on? If the Gaki's attempt to diversify the plot with the Musashi and Sumo arcs felt somewhat improvised. By the way, the guy who confronted Jack recently was not related to Masashi. In fact, he has appeared before. His name is Kiyochiro Sabu, a renowned swordsman in Japan. Possibly the last living swordsman. Sabu once nearly defeated Dopo, the god of war. Many considered him weak because he accepted his defeat before even facing Masashi. However, he knew his limits and decided not to face the legendary swordsman who was vastly superior to him. And well, feel free to share your opinion about this chapter. How would you narrate the story in a coherent way? That's all for now. See you in a future video. Take care and remember to exercise. And well friends, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you liked it. I hope you have a nice day or night. See you soon.